This is the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast, episode number 67. Thank you, announcer man. Hey, this is VoiceOver talent, Darielle Nieves, and you're listening to the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast with John Melly. Hey there, it's John. How are you today? Thanks for spending some time with me. I do appreciate it. I know you have a lot of things vying for your attention. Family, friends, work, other podcasts, you know, other forms of entertainment, all that kind of good stuff. So for you to devote your time to listening to the show, I, I take it as an honor and a privilege to share uh, some good content with you. And I love the comments that we're getting. By the way, we have in the Voice Over Marketing podcast group on Facebook, we have 2,000 29 members, 17 new members this week alone. So for those folks who just joined the Voice Over Marketing podcast group on Facebook, welcome and thank you. Thank you for listening and joining and, and contributing to the group. We've got a lot of cool stuff happening there. Also, total downloads for all the various odd and sundry episodes of the Voice Over Marketing podcast, 105,038. <laughs> I... I still shake my head when I see that number. Anyway, it's very, very cool. And this episode of the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast is sponsored by the VoiceOver Athlete Wellness Club. And every week I post new content there. If you would like to try out the VoiceOver Athlete Wellness Club, I am offering listeners of this podcast a free 30-day trial. And we've had several people join and are liking the content, downloading the new content. And this week's new content is a 23-minute guided walking meditation. And it's called Conscious Walking. And uh, members of the club get that for free as part of their membership. Every week I add some new content, new drill, new mobility drill, new exercise for voiceover talent. And this week, it's a 23-minute guided audio walking meditation. But I also created a separate course for this. If you are someone who walks, give this a try. It's 7 bucks. If you don't like it, within 30 days, you get your money back. Keep the MP3, and you can download it, put it on your smartphone, and take it for a walk with you. I will provide a link to that in this week's episode show notes. Just go to voiceovermarketingpodcast.com, episode 67, and look for the download links. And also, if you want to try a 30-day free membership for the VoiceOver Athlete Wellness Club. You are welcome to do that as well. So anyway, moving right along. The podcast is always on my mind. I'm always thinking, okay, what can I share next with the talented and fine listeners of the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast? And one question that I'm frequently asked is, John, if I want to get into voiceovers, what's, what should I do? And I've, I've talked about showing up in previous episodes. But another thing that I've told people that I'm coaching in voiceover is read. Read everything. Read everything you can and listen to everything you can. And what do I mean by read everything you can? I mean literally read everything you can. Like if, you, if you've got, um, I've got a package of nuts, uh, almonds right here in front of me. And I will look at the... Uh, ingredients. I will look at the all the packaging information, and I will read. I'll just read everything. You know, saturated fat, trans fat, polyunsaturated fat, monounsaturated fat, cholesterol, sodium, total carbohydrate, dietary fibers, total sugars. Uh, included includes zero grams of added sugars, which is you know uh, potassium, vitamin E, magnesium. But other things, too, you know, like I'll read shampoo bottles. I'll read the ingredient. I've got a, a package of gum in front of me here. It's uh, extra classic bubble gum, which it, it's really, it's, it's not very good. Um, made of sorbitol, gum-based, glycerol, natural and artificial flavors, less than 2% of hydrogenated starch. Ugh, what am I eating? Hydrolysate, soy lecithin, aspartame. Manitol, acesulfame, K, colors red, 40, lake, yellow, 6, sucralose, BHT, and blah, 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 to maintain freshness. There you go. Phenylketonurix contains phenylalanine or phenylalanine. So, uh, and I don't know the correct pronunciation, but that's my point is uh, exactly 
is you never know what you're going to be asked to read or voice or perform. Perform is my preferred term because you are performing a script. You're performing someone else's words. So why do I say this? Because you get exposed to different words. You get exposed to different terms. You get exposed to different areas of business. You know, uh, medical professionals, they have to read uh, complex terms. If they're dealing with pharmaceutical things, then they'll, they'll need to know about, you know, what the actual technical, not just the brand name, uh, of the pharmaceutical, but the technical word, I, I think you get what I'm saying here, is expose yourself to a lot of words. I can remember when I was younger and, and I still had hair and used shampoo, I would I would read the back of uh, shampoo containers and a lot of them had methyl chloroisothiazolinone in it. And I would sound those things out. I was... I was practicing before I even knew it. So read everything. Expose yourself to all kinds of words. I remember, uh, and I've talked about this in class, uh, <laughs> I've talked about this in other episodes. I took a botany class in college, and I can remember xylem, phloem, and parenchyma cells in, in my botany class. And one day I had to do a voiceover for a place called Arborjet, and they, uh, it's a company that injects nutrients into trees that grow in urban environments where, you know, they got sidewalks all around them and they don't get a lot of nutrients from the ground and their roots are compacted because of the street and people walking all over them and all that kind of stuff. So to keep them healthy, they inject them with nutrients. Well, I knew what xylem and parenchyma cells were from my botany class in college. So that was worth the tuition right there. Yeah, no, not quite. But at any rate, but it was it's worth being exposed to all of these things. So if you want a, a tip, then I would say read. Read everything. Uh, what else is here? Let me look in my... I'm just picking up stuff that's in front of me on the counter. Okay, well, I've got, believe it or not, I've got a a packet of yellow mustard. I'm looking at the, there's the wrapper. All natural ingredients, water, distilled vinegar, mustard seeds, salt, turmeric, spices, mufd by H.J. Hines, K. L. P. Pittsburgh, Pa. <laughs> you know, uh, I think it's George Carlin did a funny bit when you're in the men's room and you're at you know using the urinal on the wall and you don't want to pay attention you don't want to acknowledge the person next to you so you you look at the valve on the top of the thing US pat pending and some digit after that you know read everything what else do i have around here that i can look at well i've got a starbucks coffee mug let's look what's on uh, not a coffee mug a coffee cup let's take a gander on what we got here some gr same great sleeve less Waste, because we care about our planet, this 85% post-consumer fiber cup sleeve uses 34% less paper than our original. You know, I mean, there's, there's stuff that you can work on right there. Um, what else? Here you go. This is, you know, people think I'm kind of nuts, but I will tell you that I have some organic beetroot powder. 100% pure beetroot mixes easily. One serving equals two ounces of fresh beets. Okay, net weight 5.3 ounces, 150 grams, dietary supplement. Mix two teaspoons with eight ounces of water or juice and stir until dissolved. Calories, carbohydrates, sodium, yada, yada, yada. Produced in a facility that processes tree nuts, milk, egg, shellfish, fish, wheat, and soy. Certified Organic by Quality Assurance International. You know, when you do stuff like this, when you look at things, you become aware of different organizations like Quality Assurance International, GMP. Please recycle 100% PCR content. Now, I don't know what that means, but now that I've exposed myself to those letters, those acronyms, what have you, at least I've got something, you know, I've been exposed to it. You know, it's just all about exposing your your mind and your vocabulary to different different types of things. Uh, what else have I got here? Um, labels. No, oh, wait a minute. No, that's those aren't labels. This is uh, matte photo paper for a color printer. Still perfect for photos. And then it's got the French and the Spanish version of that. Now great for arts and crafts. 
inkjet photo paper. What else can we see here? C printer documentation for paper compatibilities. Genuine Canon ink and paper are recommended for optimized printing. Bright white matte finish for vibrant colors. Heavyweight paper ideal for creative crafts and projects. Great for printing portraits and special moments. Uh, what else? Lots of fun materials that you can download for free. You know, there are web addresses here you can practice. You can uh, look at copyright information. There's always legal disclaimers. Great little uh, tongue twisters where you can um, expose your reading, your sight reading capabilities. You know, sight reading, reading copy on the fly. That's expand your knowledge base on vocabulary. And Rodney Salisbury's got a book on tongue twisters. Well, and that's a great book. Here you can expose yourself to all kinds of words and tongue twisters. I run into stuff all the time and I say, ooh, that's a good one, you know. Um, what else? I've got a, a magazine here. Um, uh, <laughs> wow, what's this called? This is Primal Living, Essential Tips for Primal Women. I wonder what that's all about. Uh, reprogram your genes. Maximum fitness, minimal time. Uh, primal nutrition. So here's here's a concept. I, I, th this is in my studio. I don't know how it got here. But here's a concept that I'm not really overly familiar with. You know, there are articles in here on insulin, sugar, and type 2 diabetes. Can you retrain your taste? Uh, why low-carb diets work? Get the most out of your workouts? A case against cardio? Calorie myths we should all be, stop believing. Ten reasons not to trust that latest study. Magic mushrooms. Hey, hey. Play safe in the sun. Dance, dance, dance. The lost art of play. So there are all kinds of cool things in here that you can just expose yourself. Any one of these topics could be a future voiceover project for you. I mean, this is all within three feet of me, if that, within arm's reach. You know, of course, the Internet, you can really go down the rabbit hole there. I would, I would advise, you know, hard copy reading because then you can spend time with it and not strain your eyes looking at a screen. That's a, a cool tip and something that you can do anywhere, anytime. You're just kind of building up that vocabulary muscle, that pronunciation muscle, that exposure to different topics and ideas muscle, because you never know when you might be called upon to voice something like that. It means that you're more facile and you can work on a lots of topics, and, and that makes you more attractive to... Folks that want to hire you, agents, producers, agencies, give that a try if you don't already. I know we do have a lot of readers. And along with that, I wanted to talk about different things, different books that I am reading. I, I have to share this with you. I listen to Audible and I listen to podcasts. And so I got this great book on Audible and it's by Michael Caine, Blowing the Bloody Doors Off and Other Lessons in Life. By Michael Caine, the actor. Now, I love Michael Caine. And I don't know many people who don't like Michael Caine. Most people that I've talked about this book to, they say, Ooh, I love Michael Caine. Yeah, he's a great actor. This is a cool book because he talks about, and, and we're performers, he gives a lot of tips on performing, learning from others. He talks about his background, how he got started, why he fell in love with acting. He talks about his childhood, overcoming adversity, being tenacious, and how he fueled his drive when he had plenty of people tell him, give it up, you don't have any talent. How many times have we heard that story? How many people have actually said to you, oh boy, that's a tough business. I remember when I was interested in getting into radio, I was doing my job in the legislature and I was a lobbyist and I, would, I knew people in radio uh, or had been in radio and they put me in touch with people who were currently in radio. And to a person, they all said, don't do it. It's a terrible thing to do. And I'm like, oh, this isn't the message that I want to hear. So I can identify with this. We can all identify with this. Who do you think you are to think that your voice should be heard by people, that you should be the one? Well, here's the motivation. This is a great book. I'm in, on chapter 12 of 18. I've been listening to it in the car on my way about town. Uh, it is really, really good. I would highly recommend it. And uh, go to Audible. I'm not even, no affiliate link or anything like that. Uh, or if you prefer to read hard copy, I'm sure it's, it's good too. But I like books 
when the author, when they have the capacity to narrate the audiobook. I love audiobooks when they are narrated by the author. Now, granted, some authors should not narrate their own books. This is one of those where the author should. And he, he does a magnificent job. It's fun to listen to him. He addresses his Cockney accent in the book. He's kind of been talking about that, I think, in the previous chapter. And I will say that he talks about how he doesn't disguise his accent when he's out and about and being who he is. He prefers to perform unless the character calls for a specific accent. He prefers to perform in his natural speaking voice. Uh, I remember uh, he was in a movie called Secondhand Lions with Robert Duvall and Haley Joel Osmond. And he, Michael Caine, plays this cranky American farmer. And I loved him in that movie. And uh, so in that case, his character was a cranky American farmer. And he pulls it off, you know. And so blowing the bloody doors off sounds interesting, but he gets to it in terms of, um, I, I don't want to give away why it's called that. But it's a, it's a cool title. I think you will enjoy that book. Another book that I re listened to, uh, people ask me what I'm reading all the time. Another book that I, I recently listened to was The Operator, and that was written and performed by Robert O'Neill. And Robert O'Neill is the Navy SEAL who was on uh, SEAL Team 6. He was on the Bin Laden raid and was the Navy SEAL uh, who took out Osama Bin Laden. And... He does a great job. Uh, he is not a professional voice talent, but he is the guy who should have told that story. And so I listened to that, and he talks about, you know, we can learn things from all walks of life. And what I like to hear are people who have a goal, have a vision, and a desire and a drive, and they continue and they succeed. And 90% of this book by Robert O'Neill is um, about how he joined the Navy out of high school, why he joined the Navy. And it's kind of, I, I'm not going to give it away, uh, but it's kind of an interesting story. But then he talks about going, through, he, he couldn't, I will say this, he's from Idaho and he couldn't swim. And so he had to learn how to swim in order to become a Navy SEAL. So that's where he was starting from. He did hunt, so he had some firearms experience, but he joined the Navy, he couldn't swim, and if you know anything about Navy SEALs, they call them SEALs because it's sea, air, land, and so they spend a lot of time in the water. And so he talks about all the stuff that they did and they do to get people to quit out of BUDS, you know, which is basically the initial SEAL training. Because they want people who won't quit. They want to put them through every conceivable challenge so that they won't quit when it counts on the battlefield when they're out there with their teammates in critical situations. And everybody needs to be able to rely on each other to make it home. And he goes through all of these, all of these different... And I was under the impression, it shows you how much I know... Uh, I thought that Hell Week was the culmination of Navy SEAL training. I didn't know Hell Week happens on week five, and there are 28 weeks of the training. So it, that is mind-boggling. He talks about how they would tie each other, you know, in training, they would call it drown-proofing. And he couldn't, He initially, like I said, he couldn't swim, but he, uh, they had his hands and his feet tied together, and then they had to bob up and down in this pool. And they had these guys trying to keep them down, and they had to fight their way up and dive down and pick things up with their teeth and swim up and get approval from the instructor on the surface saying, okay, you did it, now you can come out of the pool. And they just did this day after day after day after day, and they all wanted to get inside their head and make them quit because they needed other people on the teams to be able to rely on everybody who was there. They knew that they've been through everything. They've had that common ground, and they can rely on them. They'll be there for, they were there for each other, you know? And so it, it's just very inspiring, and you got to listen to the book. I, it's an amazing story. I will say he had one thought that kept him motivated, that kept him from quitting 
throughout his entire career. And it's a very, very powerful, motivating tool that he used uh, that kept him from quitting. And um, it wasn't for himself. It was for someone else. And I don't want to give it away. I think if you listen to the story, it's pretty inspiring. And part of the reason why I like these stories is that I need the motivation to keep going and trying and doing different things. If you're just starting out in voiceover, if you're just getting started and don't know where to go or avail yourself of the information, surround yourself with information and stories and motivation that keeps you going. These stories are are very, very impressive. Another book I am reading right now, totally different topic, is Anatomy Trains. I have a list of books I've read, and I keep that in Evernote, and I'm going to try and um, tell you while I'm talking to you. Oh, who's that? Come in. Hi, can I help you? Hey, yeah, Louis de Gizmo. Louis de Gizmo. Yeah, Louis. Yeah, okay. What can I do for you, Louis? Hey, I got, got a joke for you, okay? No. Okay. Knock, knock. Knock, knock? Knock, knock. <sighs> who's there? Spell. Spell who? Okay, okay. W H. Oh, oh, come on, get out of here, yeah. <laughs> Very funny, yeah. <laughs> get yeah, out of yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, I'm just having some fun here. Okay, I'm Thank fine. you, Louie. Jeez. Yeah, okay. So, um, a thought I had while he was telling his joke, I remember when I was, like, in junior high school, one, somebody asked what a word meant, and I said, and I said, oh, I think the word was trellis. Why do I remember that? That was, like, 40 years ago. Okay, I said, oh, well, a trellis is a thing that you can grow plants up against so that they will grow on that as opposed to across the ground and all that kind of stuff. You know, you put roses on it and other vines. Anyway, and she just kind of looked at me weird, and I said, what? And she says, well, you know it. And I said, well, yeah. Just, I don't read the dictionary. And I can remember thinking at the time, well, maybe you should. I actually... I did like to read the dictionary, and I would suggest that you do. And here's a tip for uh, folks who are more into looking things up on the Internet. It sounds like a dorky, dorky thing to do, but you're, if you're a voice talent, your currency is language, words. And having a facility with words is hugely powerful in this industry. So you know what? I would get a dictionary, like a hard copy dictionary rather than just looking up words on Google. Because the cool thing about that, at least for me as Mr. Geek here, is that you would read, you just open it up and find a word and read a definition. And then frequently what happens is that part of the definition has a word in it that you don't understand. And you go, hmm, I wonder what that word is. And then you start perusing. It's kind of like shopping in a record store. Versus buying on uh, iTunes. You know, in a record store, you can look and see all the things that are available, and you browse, and you get exposed to different things, as opposed to curated content to your listening habits. Hmm. Anyway, all right, I don't want to digress too much. So read the dictionary, get a real dictionary, go to the library, and just look through the dictionary. You are going to lose, you, you, you'll lose yourself. Give yourself an hour or so, and it'll be over like that. You know what I'm saying? All right. Anatomy Trains by Thomas Myers, and that is all about, uh, this has got to do with the voiceover athlete and uh, certain things about the anatomy. There's this fascia, fascial tissue that runs through our body, basically makes our body the shape that it is. It holds our organs. It runs between all of our cells and our muscles and between bones and, uh, and attaches bones, uh, muscles to bone, and all that kind of stuff. It's the connective tissue. And it's one of those things where, like, you know, if you've got a headache, if you do certain things with your ankle, you can actually help your, your headache. You're like, what? Yeah. Uh, it, it's a fascinating book. Um, what else? Oh, I'm reading a book by Ed Morales, who was the, um, an FBI agent in the 1980s, and it's called The FBI Miami Firefight, and it actually impacted how the FBI handles tactics and how they address uh, how to deal with criminals and other things based on what happened in this incident where, unfortunately, f I think four FBI agents were killed. That's an interesting book. Uh, I started to look at the plant paradox. I started to listen to that, and I'm going to say something mean. I don't know who did it, um, but... I, it, okay, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it, but... I kind of felt like I was listening to C-3PO narrate a book. 
And I, I just couldn't get past that, so I stopped. Um, the books that I've been listening to and, and reading quite a bit lately are by this author, Joe Dispenza. He's a doctor, and there's a really cool book called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And this book, have you read that or listened to that? Oh, my. What a very interesting concept that is. Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And you have to kind of sit with that idea. The idea, the broad strokes on this is that thoughts are things. Our thoughts are things. Give a simple example. I want a cup of coffee. That's a thought. And that thought prompts you, the person, to take the steps you need to get a cup of coffee and realize that goal. So the thought starts as a thought but manifests itself in the actual result of a cup of coffee. Also back this up was I remember my dad telling me a story when I was a kid about how I think he had a school project or a book report due the next day or whatever. And he didn't want to do it. And so he said, uh, I don't feel well. And he started to, you know, tell his, my grandparents, his parents, uh, I, I don't feel well. I, I feel sick. So they took his temperature and sure enough, he had a temperature. And so he was like, huh, wow, cool. He, he got to hang out in his room and got out of having to do his book report that day or something like that. Uh, but then his uncle shows up with four tickets to the Red Sox game and wanted to know if the boys could go to the game with him. Uh, you know, my father was like, oh, yeah, I'd love to go to the game. And my grandfather said, well, yeah, you're not feeling well, so you're going to have to stay home. So he got, he lost out. He thought he had won, but he had lost out. But the point is, is that he created that temperature, that illness, by thinking about it. So thoughts are things. Everything that you do starts off as a thought, right? There are patterns and internal dialogues that we have as people. You know, what do we think about? What do we, you know, what do we do? Most of this guy, this guy talks, this Joe Dispenza talks about how we live most of our lives on autopilot, unconsciously. You know, you get up in the morning, you use the bathroom, you brush your teeth, you drink some water, you get dressed, you take you take your shower, get dressed, you make your coffee, have your breakfast. If you go somewhere, you drive, you basically, you ever drive your car and get someplace and you wonder, oh, wow, geez, I don't even remember the drive over here. How did I get here so fast? Wow. You're kind of hip hypnotized going through your day, you know? So those are all like these subconscious programs that are running what we think about what we watch who we listen to who we talk to first thing in the morning who do we talk to when we show up uh, on a gig or whatever all of these things are programmed and our thoughts in our mind release chemicals like if you get nervous if you see something that frightens you or you get concerned or you start to think about things that you get concerned about, like if you have a loved one who's in the hospital and you hope they're okay and you get those butterflies in your stomach, well, those thoughts created that physical reaction in your body. And over time, if you create those thoughts over and over and over, you can literally become addicted to the physical sensations created from the chemicals that your body is producing based on what you think about. Just like any other addiction, we can literally become addicted to emotions and thought patterns, you know, and that can be good or it can be bad. It can be negative. And what he talks about is being consciously aware of the thoughts that you have on a day-to-day -day basis. Do you get addicted to that feeling? You know, and are you aware of the things that you do, the decisions that you make every day? It's a very interesting exercise and it's tough, but it's an interesting book because what he talks about is that if you want to make changes in your life, you have to take hold of your thought patterns as they are now and how those thoughts are affecting your body chemically, physically. And if you want to change them, you have to change your thought patterns 
and your body can rebel against it because your body literally gets addicted. So like I've had anxiety in the past. And so you go, why am I constantly anxious about this stuff? Well, it's because your body's used to that adrenaline and cortisol and all the other fun things that get dumped into your system when you're worried about stuff. And when you try and change those thoughts, your body says, um, excuse me. We haven't had our head of cortisol and adrenaline. So remember that thing you were all torqued up about? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, because your <laughs> your body says we haven't had our hit. So it puts that thought back in your head and pfft, there you go. Takes a lot of work. It's an interesting thing. So Joe Dispenza, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Uh, very interesting book. What else am I... Uh, reading. I'm reading all kinds of stuff. The Power of Habit. I can't find that on my list here. I keep a list of all the books that I've read, either uh, physically read the book, Kindle, or listened to. And then I have little notations next to whether it was an audio or, or a physical book. So you get the idea. Kind of a different episode today. What books are you reading? What do you like to read? I would love, I'm always looking for new material, new ideas, new topics to explore. I mean, I've got plenty on my table, but I'm always interested in learning new words because it just exposes me to greater and greater vocabulary that I, I can bring to the table when I walk into the recording studio and do a gig for someone. You know, at least I have... Um, how do you say that word? Uh, you don't want to be that guy or gal. How do, how, do you say, how do you say this? I'm sorry, I've done absolutely no show prep. That's the other thing that Michael Caine talks about in Blow the Bloody Doors Off or whatever it is. He talks about how he's prepared, how he does his research. He knows his lines before they ever, he ever walks onto the movie set. Uh, and he constantly recites his script so that when it comes time to shoot, the words are second nature to him. They flow automatically and he can take the energy that he would have used trying to remember the line and instead put it into his performance. It's interesting how that thought parallels what I've talked about actually in the last episode about charging more for your rates because getting a higher rate per gig allows you to devote more energy and talent on that project. So charging higher rates will get you, will make you do better work, hopefully, or it should. It should leverage your time so that you sit there and go, when you get the script, you go, cool. You don't have to worry about where's the next gig coming from. Or, well, you, need, you, you always want to keep the hopper full. I get it. But it's not like I got to rush through this session and get that out the door so that I can get to the six more that I'm going to do for 30 bucks a piece. Yeah, you don't want that. You, know, you, you can devote your energy to the performance. Who ever thought that rates could be part of doing your homework? Huh? That's an interesting little nexus. Let's explore that sometime. Again, tell me what you're reading. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you're doing well. And again, if you want to take advantage of a free 30-day trial to the VoiceOver Athlete Wellness Club, please see the show notes in this week's episode, episode 67. And if you want to just take that 23-minute guided walking meditation, conscious walking, uh, I have that available for you as well as a separate download. It's 7 bucks. If you don't like it, keep the MP3 and within 30 days you get your money back. I mean, how can you go wrong there, right? So thanks for listening, and I will talk to you soon. Take care. Our program originates in the Boston studios. We hope you'll join us again. Until then, we bid you au revoir, keep the chin up, and the best of luck. Well, that's it for this episode of the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast. If you like this podcast, please subscribe to it at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com so you'll get notices of new episodes, and please share it with your friends and colleagues in the voiceover world. Also, it would be a huge help if you'd like this podcast and rate it on iTunes to help keep it near the top of the list. Feel free to share your comments and questions about this episode and future topics you'd like discussed at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com. And if you'd like more information on one-on-one -on -one coaching with me and mastermind group opportunities where we focus on growing your business, feel free to drop me a line at my cyber assistance email address at mike at johnmelly.com. Thanks for listening. Now go out there and share your voice with the world.